In this chapter, we're going to learn about all the new typographic features of CSS3. Let's get started. Rather than jumping into something more technical like CSS3 fonts, we're going to start off with something a bit more fun that you can use right away, and that is the all new text shadow property. So here you can see we have just a basic page with nothing on it, and I'm gonna go ahead and add some markup. So we'll type out an H1, which we'll be applying our text shadow to, and we'll just call it text shadows. And we're done with the markup that is. Now let's move on to the part that you came here for, which is the CSS. Now here you can see we just have some basic CSS, nothing too fancy, just to kind of bootstrap the page. So I'm gonna go ahead and type out a really basic text shadow, and then I'll explain each part. So first we need to select our H1, and I'm actually gonna align it center so that we can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to make the font size kind of large here. And let's just switch back and see how that looks. Great. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and type out our text shadow. And I'm just gonna do a really basic text shadow here. And when we switch back to the browser and refresh, there we have it, a very basic text shadow. Now, I know this looks a bit clunky, kind of like clip art from 1997, but we're gonna go ahead and improve on that quite a bit. Let's go ahead and switch back to the code first. Now, text shadow takes several arguments. The first argument is the X offset, which here we've set to a value of three pixels. This determines how far to the left or right the text shadow is placed relative to the text. I've gone ahead and set it to three in this case, but we can go ahead and push it to the left with a negative value. So we'll put negative three. And when we switch back and refresh, you can see that we've now pushed this text shadow to the left. Now the next argument is the Y offset, and this determines the vertical placement of the shadow relative to the text. Again, we've set it to positive three pixels, but we could set this to a negative value as well and make it appear above the text. The next argument is the blur radius. Now here I've set this to zero for our first example, but let's go ahead and try playing around with this. If we bump up our blur radius to something like five pixels, it will actually start to blur our shadow. So now our shadow is starting to look a little bit nicer, like something you might expect from Photoshop. Now the last argument is the color. Now we're just setting this to a grayish tone for now, but we could set this to any color we want. If you've ever wondered what an orange shadow might look like, we can go ahead and try that out. So we'll set this to a nice orange looking color. And when we refresh, pretty cool. So now that we're past the basics, we can go ahead and try some more advanced techniques. One really interesting technique that you can use is the RGBA color model. We'll talk more about the RGBA color model in an upcoming video. So for now, we'll keep it very basic. RGBA stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. We can define a color by setting its red, green, and blue color, and then we can set a number between one and zero to dial down the opacity. So let's go ahead and try that in place of our hexadecimal value here. So we'll type RGBA, and we'll go ahead and set this to black by just giving RG and B a value of zero, and we'll dial down the opacity just a little bit by setting it to a value of 0.8. And when I refresh the page, you can see that we have a more blended looking shadow here, which is pretty nice. Now, this technique doesn't make a whole lot of difference on this simple page, but if you had a textured or more complex background, you would be able to see it shining through ever so slightly, and even more so if you turned down the opacity on the text shadow even further. Another interesting thing about text shadows is that you can actually have up to six shadows per element. So let's go ahead and try adding a second shadow. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a comma here because we separate our shadows with commas. And I'm going to give it an X of 10 pixels, a Y of negative five pixels, just to offset it from our first one. And I'll even give it a larger blur radius and we'll just set the color to orange. And if we go back and refresh, you can see that we now have two shadows. We have our first one here, which is kind of 
the darker one, and then we have a second orange shadow, which is going to the upper right. Now you can imagine how this might be used with a few red, yellow, and orange shadows to make some really cool flame effects or some subtle glows. Now if that's too cheesy for you, I'd like to show you one final technique that's a bit more elegant and subtle. So we're going to switch back to our text editor, and we're actually going to change the color of our text to a much lighter color. And we're going to delete our second shadow here because we don't need that anymore. And we're just going to delete this RGBA and change it to a black color. We're going to set the X offset to zero, the Y offset to negative one pixels, and the blur radius to one pixel. Now, when I switch back and refresh, you can see that by using a text shadow that's offset by one pixel, we can create this really neat inset text effect. The light color of the text and the dark color of the shadow combine to make the shadow appear as though it's inside the text and that the text is pressed into the page. The one pixel blur radius really finishes things off and sort of softens the edges so that it can all gel together really nicely. That about wraps things up for text shadows, but in the next video, we'll take a look at some more things you can do with text in CSS3.